Hello and welcome. My name is Zafar Iqbal and you are watching the Mojo story. Big breakthrough and a diplomatic victory for India. Eight former Indian Navy officers who were held in Qatar on spying charges have been released. On your screen, you can see them arriving in India early today. And when they reached India, they expressed gratitude towards Prime Minister Modi for his role in securing their release. The details of the release process are undisclosed, but uh, seven of them have already reached India, and the eighth one is also likely to be back in India soon. But clearly, happy faces you can see on the screen they have been held in Qatar for 18 years, 18 months on charge of spying, and now they are back in India and reunited with their families. To discuss this, we are joined by an eminent panel. Uh, will be joined by Ambassador KB Fabian, is a former amb Indian ambassador to Qatar. Uh, welcome to show, sir. Major General Dhruv Kato joins us from the India Foundation. Uh, welcome, uh, General Saab. Uh, Commodore G.J. Singh, Senior Defense Analyst, also uh, joins us. Uh, welcome to the show, sir. Uh, Ambassador Fabian, if I can start with you, there has been intense diplomatic efforts uh, that were done in more than a year now. And finally, they are born fruit, and these men have been brought back to home. Uh, obviously, it must have been an uphill task. What really worked? According to the, them, it was the intervention at the top, the intervention of the prime minister that really helped and secured their release. Uh, thank you. Uh, it is a matter you know, for all of us to rejoice, not only for the families, but for all of us. Now, let us understand what has happened. You know, the court of first instance uh, uh, sentenced them to death. Then there was a appellate court which uh, revoked the death sentence and, uh, you know, gave uh, long years of uh, imprisonment. Then the matter went to the Court of Cassation. Now, the Court of Cassation, of course, is the highest court, but there is a difference between the Court of Cassation and the Supreme Court of India, for example, in the sense that the Court of Cassation does not, I repeat, does not go into the facts of the case. It only looks into the legalities, uh, including whether there was any procedural error. Now, that Court of Cassation has uh, uh, released all the eight, which means they are not guilty, which means there was no need for any royal pardon from the Amir. So this is right. great. But, but we also have to understand that, uh, you know, the young Amir also was put in a very difficult situation because, uh, you know, he obviously cannot... Uh, uh, permit the execution of eight uh, Indians. Obviously, he cannot. But also, it's a little <clears throat> tricky for him to pardon those who are convicted for sedition, sedition against uh, conspiracy against uh, the national security of Qatar. So, I think the Qatari legal system, A, has delivered justice, that is the highest court, B, it, they have done it in a manner which saves, makes it easier for them also. But above all, Indian diplomacy has worked smartly because uh, I remember when this was being discussed, many commentators saying that, you know, oh, we should ask the Americans to talk to Qatar and all that. I have then maintained we had the legal route. And once the legal route is uh, completed, we had the political diplomatic at the highest level. So. What has happened is very good, but let me explain very briefly that while we rejoice, we should also make an in-depth examination of what happened, why it happened, because above all the question is why did the prosecution cutter do what it did? Because if they did not have a good case, why did they do that? Who influenced them? Right. Right. That's an important point. What happened and why did it happen in the first place? But let's hear from one of the sailors who, on reaching India, they were happy and they were thanking the Prime Minister. Let's play that sound bite. 
कि वापस इंडिया पहुंच गए हम सेफ एंड साउंड और डेफिनेटली ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री मोदी को धन्यवाद करना चाहेंगे कि उनके पर्सनल इंटरवेंशन से ये पॉसिबल हुआ और गवर्नमेंट ऑफ कतार के हिस एक्सलेंसी द अमीर को कि उन्होंने ये होने दिया एंड बस यही बोलना चाहेंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच Does uh, at the first, the foreign ministry released a statement at that point in time and said that they were shocked. There was an expression of shock. Uh, but General Dhru Katoj, uh, although it's okay that they have come back home and there was intervention and Indian diplomacy worked, but the question really comes up as uh, Ambassador Fabian was saying: Why did it happen in the first place? Who could have influenced them? Uh, you know, to to. to put up a case against these eight men a uh, thank you sir for ji uh, you see what ambassador fabian has said uh, i'm totally in agreement with the question is why were these eight naval uh, uh, officers arrested in the first place you know uh, in your show earlier i think some months back i had actually made the statement yeah. that if yeah. if it was actually a case of spying i mean nobody is going to put eight people as spies in the same place it doesn't make sense if it is a case of spying there would be one individual at the maximum now for them to have accused eight of them for spying um, I, i i think it was well and beyond anything which is imaginable so it led to the conclusion that it was a concocted case now here particularly in this particular case uh, pakistanis had a great influence earlier and with the indian naval people coming in they lost that space perhaps it could be something to do with what the isi has engineered over a period of time but that notwithstanding it is not possible even for the isi to have made a full proof case so obviously there has been some links between what the isi did and what some people in the qatar their authorities have done uh, that the, in, the these sailors got arrested in the first place and they have spent 18 months of their life in incarceration uh, it will be difficult to get to the truth at this point of time but i presume over over the next few years the truth will come out as it always does coming down to the release uh, i think it is very important to remember that both political and diplomatic agencies have actually delivered it required politics and diplomacy at the apex level that means at the prime minister's level and at the minister of external affairs level to function um, in a coordinated manner and i think the meeting with the prime minister had with the, with his excellency the emir of uh, qatar uh, also played a very important role uh, uh ambassador fabian yes. has stated that it would not have been appropriate for uh, the emir to have pardoned all eight i think that is a correct i think that is a correct thing uh, thing to state because his position if he had pardoned eight would have thrown up a host of questions as to why doesn't he pardon other people so the way it has been managed i think it uh, works well for india it works well for india's uh, diplomacy and it also suits the uh, authorities in uh, in qatar so it is a it is a end result which i think has ended well for all parties concerned and yes. uh, very frankly right. it is a time to rejoice and to celebrate the occasion zafar right. you know the end result is what matters and perhaps a way out was found and the legal process was followed through uh, but kamador uh, gj singh uh, the point here is all this time the family members of all these eight men they were really appealing the government of india to intervene although uh, india was constantly in touch with qatari authorities but they would have had a big relief today all these men they came back to india according to reports the family was informed last night and today early hours they reached india Uh, yes of course uh, as the earlier speakers have said that this is a occasion which has to be uh, rejoiced it is a occasion for celebrations uh, to cut the long story short is that the pressure of the families and the government of india has really worked uh, because uh, in my opinion earlier the qatar authorities were very adamant uh, for obvious reasons uh, that they were under the influence of the isi because isi had been a great influencer in the middle east all the uh, and this being a very sensitive issue 
Why sensitive? Because these eight officers had gone there for work uh, to assist them to have their stealth submarines, which were being manufactured by the Italians, Italian U-212, which were to be inducted in the Qatari uh, Amir Naval Force. Uh, so this uh, was, in my opinion, uh, was the point where the ISI was uh, not happy. They, this is what irritated them. And they concocted a story, something like what we had seen a parallel before with Commander Zadar. Now, Commander Zadar was the one who was in Chabahar, Iranian port. And he was uh, just went for work there. Uh, you'll be surprised to know that a large number of our uh, naval officers, sailors, not only from the Navy, but from the other services also, they go to Middle East uh, for their development of the infrastructure, for any kind of assistance that they need. Because one reason is that they get good salary there. So everybody in the pursuit of uh, having a better life or even greater luxurious life and uh, people do get attracted, do get tempted to go and work there. And this is what probably, in my opinion, motivated these people also to go there and earn some extra money. Yeah. So, But their, their aim was to assist them. Now, the other story which was cooked up by the ISI came into picture because of the ISI links with these countries uh, 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 their, their counterparts, their, their intelligence agencies. Because as I said, the, uh, the, the ISI is a big influencer with these Islamic countries, especially uh, for uh, them to get into that mode of anti-India. You know, they, are, they, they, right. they basically want to make up stories there where they want to make the yeah. other nations in the Middle East to work or to uh, propagate that these countries are uh, actually uh, India is anti-Islam or anti-Muslim uh, or something like that. It's a, it's a I would call it a, a religious card also played by the uh, ISI uh, in cooking up these stories. And those people obviously right. uh, get uh, uh, sort of influence. But how there's right. a big but. But our prime minister has got an image now, and he is a person who is an international influencer. He is a very tall figure internationally. Everybody recognizes the way he is uh, steering India. And the development story of India also has uh, made a big impact on these countries and That's their right. uh, leadership. So this is right. another right. personal charm, you personal know, chemistry, Mr. Right. Modi, with the... Sheikh Tamim bin Al Thana, I would call it, right. and especially when he right. met him in high on the sidelines of COP28, uh, made all the difference. Yeah. So I think uh, you know, you know, you know, this prime ministers, prime ministers' intervention at the highest level made all the difference. Uh, yes. You're saying, but that is exactly the sentiment that was reflected by uh, those sailors, those ex. Navy men when they reached India. If we can play the second sound bite before we go to Ambassador uh, Fabian. We have waited uh, almost 18 months to be back in India. We're extremely grateful to the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. It certainly wouldn't have been possible without his uh, personal intervention and that equation with uh, the Emir of Qatar. Uh, I think we are grateful to the Government of India, the bottom of our heart. For the every effort that has been made, and this day wouldn't have been possible without it. Grateful indeed. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, Ambassador Fabian, he says that it would not have been possible without personal efforts of Prime Minister Modi, making it very clear that it was not possible for them to come back uh, to India had it not been personal efforts put in by Prime Minister that ensured their peace. Well, it's like this, we have to look at the big picture. The big yes. picture is that uh, very recently, India and Qatar extended a long-term LNG contract. Just a few days ago. Second, uh, the Prime Minister is going to UAE for a two-day visit. 
Yeah. Third is that uh, there is a bit of a neighborly rivalry between Qatar and the UAE. You know, between Dubai's international reputation and all that, which uh, Doha has to great measure, you know, sort of leveled up. You know what I mean? So all that is there. So you, Qatar certainly wanted to, did not want to spoil the relations with India. You know, Qatar is very keen to maintain good relations with India. So these are all the factors. Now, I just want to make two points. One is that these innocent naval veterans have been in jail for 18 months and they deserve to be compensated. And uh, diplomatically speaking, it will be a little, you know, not appropriate. It will be a little awkward to ask Qatar to compensate them, you know. Yeah. So it is the government of India to compensate them. Second, our naval attache who left, you know, when this thing uh, 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 broke out, we expect him to go back. Uh, you know, and third thing is that whether it is ISI or anyone else, it uh, is possible that somebody has cracked into the emails of our uh, of our uh, personnel without their knowledge and has originated emails with somebody else, which gave the impression that there was a conspiracy, that they were letting right. out secrets fine diplomatic nuances that you put out. Uh, but General Katoch, the point is that, as uh, Ambassador Fabian was saying, somebody could have cracked inside the email details of uh, the Indian nationals. So these things could happen in the future also. What measures can be taken to prevent such similar incidents from happening in the future and to protect the rights of Indian uh, nationals working abroad? Well, Zafar, very frankly, technology is well advanced now. If somebody hacks into my personal computer and uh, puts in certain emails, we'll come to know. You, you see, I mean, the investigating authorities will come to know. And if they have uh, simply taken it at face value, then I'm afraid something is wrong with that investigation. Any investigation worth its salt will find it out. And they will say, OK, this particular laptop or this computer was hacked. And this email has actually originated from this particular source <laughs> and not from this computer. So. Uh, if it has happened, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not privy to this information. Ambassador Fabian may have it. I don't have this information. But uh, should it be true, then I think it, uh, it indicates a very low level of competence on the investigative agencies. That is one. Uh, the second point which he made was really about comp the Indian authorities compensating these eight naval sailors. Now, I don't think, uh, I don't think the eight Indian neighbors will be look looking for compensation. The fact that they have come back to India, I think, is a great achievement. And uh, I don't think they should be soiled with any pettiness to say, OK, we'll compensate them in this manner or that manner. Uh, that is making the thing too petty. If any compensation has to be given, the, the, uh, the Qatari government should be magnanimous uh, enough to admit that they went wrong and then compensate them for their lives. Uh, I don't think we should be here setting any wrong precedent in any particular manner. Zafar. Right. Uh, now, Commodore uh, G.J. Singh, I remember last time when we spoke, we were talking about Indians, <clears throat> Indian nationals working in Qatar. There are large number of Indians who are working there in Qatar, in Dubai, and in other uh, places in Middle East. At that point in time, they must have been very worried when this death sentence was awarded to all these eight men. But today, I think the it must be the sentiment must be quite the opposite that they have all been released they have reached home and he has put out a statement must be very reassuring for them uh, yes uh, you are very right because uh, this was very worrying because uh, as i said earlier there are a very large number of people in fact our naval officers and defense personnel are preferred over any other nation because of their uh, good hold on uh, subject, uh, very good knowledge, intelligent, and also ready to work at not a very higher rates. They probably accept uh, even 
a uh, little lower rate, uh, salaries than what they would probably give it to a European or to American. Uh, see, all these combinations put together, our people are preferred a lot. They, they, the, the Middle East countries want them. Uh, and they yeah. very well uh, behave. They conduct themselves very well in a professional manner. They don't get into these kinds of uh, things, you know, like asponage and all that. They basically go, as <clears> I said, <throat> for their little extra rosy roti. Uh, it is not that they need money. They just probably go there to make the little more luxurious life. Otherwise, all the veterans in the Indian service are very well uh, looked after. Very good pensions, very good uh, facilities and all that. Uh, so, uh, the problem uh, is that... Uh, when these things happen, they really worry us. Because in case of, like uh, Commander Yadav uh, at uh, Chah Bahar, for example, he was working peacefully. One uh, morning, the ISI people just, because we know that the border, uh, Iranian border with Pakistan, especially the Balochistan side is very porous. Uh, it is just about an hour or two hours uh, drive in a good vehicle up to Shah Bahar. They came in the morning and just picked them up and took across the border and uh, no, charged with all kinds of uh, 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 this thing that he has uh, been doing, uh, spying there, and the big made a big case out of it, as everybody knows. Uh, and this was, of course, bought by some of the Middle East countries also. That probably this these naval officers are like that. Uh, otherwise, till today, they have not been able to give any proof what he has done. They 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 were right. saying that he's uh, come destroy Pakistan. He has come to, uh, you know, train people there and anti-Pakistan. But nothing has been found. He is totally innocent. Uh, it is just because he went there. Because not only that, there are a lot of rigs. Rigs in uh, Dubai, uh, rigs in Middle East, in uh, in uh, posts like Chah Bahar, where people want to work on uh, rigs. Uh, we have the OSVs, you know, the small boats support, which, which give the logistics support to these rigs. So for uh, sailing them and for, uh, you know, uh, using them, they need personnel. So naval officers or naval sailors come very handy to them uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, put them as a captain or a skipper on those uh, boats. So right. all these things are, uh, you know, being taken care of. And this worries uh, the whole lot of naval veterans and naval officers and sailors and other uh, defense personnel, ex-veterans working there in the Middle East, there are no two uh, opinions about it. This is something which uh, uh, has just unnecessarily cropped up and cropped up by uh, Pakistan. Nobody else. Right. I, I I don't see gray anywhere. My, my, my mind is very clear. This is all uh, concocted by uh, ISI, the uh, handiwork of them. Because they're anti-India, they, they uh, outside world do not know what exactly, right. how we work. And uh, right. our people are uh, that way very, very uh, professional. They, they are right. very loyal to those countries where they are working. And uh, <laughs> right. as I said earlier, their families, they, are, they get worried. Uh, because uh, had they not gone there, they would have found a job here. Probably not at that great salary uh, as yeah. they were probably being paid there. But look at the kind of uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, problems uh, they went through. What kind right. of pain and their families, torture, mental torture went through. This is something which right. worries everybody. But uh, yeah. as I said, uh, we have a very, uh, very, uh, what you call uh, charming, uh, very influential uh, the leadership these days. Our diplomacy is very uh, effective. Uh, right. Uh, MEA and I, I, the I'd, I'd, I'd want to. I'd want to mention on the screen. We're seeing the awards that they have won. won. Captain Nautej Gill awarded the President Gold Medal as a cadet. He was posted at INS Virat. He also commanded INS Praval. So these are decorated officers. Commander uh, Sagun, uh, Sagunakar Pal Pakala, engineering officer in the Navy, crossed the equator twice. A broad INS uh, Tarangini uh, received a commendation from the commander in chief. Uh, these are the men who were actually detained, highly decorated officers, eight former uh, Navy officers who were uh, actually detained there for 18 months. And they were, in the first instance, awarded a death sentence. And then 
uh, that was commuted. Uh, uh, Commander uh, Purnidu Tiwari, he's the one who has not arrived uh, yet. Other seven have come in. Uh, navigation specialist, first ever armed forces veteran to receive the Pravasi Bharat Samman, received the award by the then president Ramnath Kovin. Uh, so these are these are the men who were actually held up in uh, Qatar on uh, charge of espionage. The commander, Captain B. K. Verma, the navigation specialist, served abroad a Godavari class ship topper in the staff college course. Now look at the profile. Uh, commander Amit Nagpal, communication specialist in the Navy. So look at their profile. Their commander S.K. Gupta specialized in gunnery. So they are well-decorated officers, acclaimed in their profession. Ragesh, sailor in the Navy, only non-commissioned officer to be involved in the case. Uh, so all of them have proved their metal. Uh, they have been there. Captain Saurabh, she's the engineering officer in the Navy, received commendation from Commander-in-Chief twice. Was He was a uh, command uh, a refit officer at Southern Navy Naval Command. So uh, so they have been exemplary officers. They have, uh, And now they were charged of espionage, very bizarre and strange uh, in many ways. But you were mentioning about... Uh, uh, Kulbushan Jadav, for the benefit of our viewers, he was a former naval officer who has been held up in Pakistan jailed and is serving a sentence. He was arrested from Chabahar in Iran and moved to Pakistan and then that case was framed. Uh, but uh, coming back to, the, uh, to these eight men uh, who have now been released before uh, going to Ambassador Fabian, if we can one play one another sound bite that we have just the time when they reached india that they were just happy and delighted that they're back home and they're free and reunited with their people and their country without without the intervention of prime minister modi it wouldn't be aaj hum aapke samne khade nahi ho rahe hote agar intervention nahi hota at that level highest level and especially government of india unke athak prayas se he was consistently lagera and we are there in front of him. Ambassador Fabian, what are the lessons that can be learned from this case to ensure that such incidents do not take place in the future and also to ensure the safety and security of uh, Indian citizens abroad? A uh, couple of things. Uh, one matter I want to mention is about uh, information technology security. In the case of Qatar, a few years ago, there was a blockade against Qatar initiated by the by the Saudi Arabia, UAE and right. others. Now, right. a day or two before that, before it was announced, uh, a country neighbor to Qatar, I do not wish to mention by name, arranged for cracking into Qatar news agencies uh, uh, software system and made the Am Amir, his, his Highness the Amir, say nasty things about America and certain sort of complimentary things about Iran. Now, Qatar News Agency took a while to figure it out before they could uh, delete it. So this is a very serious matter and uh, we have to keep that in mind. Secondly, in this case, Qatar was a little opaque in telling us about what it was all about. Now, that, you know, uh, should not have been the case. After all, even if it were, according to them, at that stage, at that stage, according to the prosecution, in espionage case and all that, Qatar should have been more... Uh, sort of, you know, transparent in its communication. So we have to make sure that, you know, uh, the communications with the other powers are transparent. And third thing is that, uh, uh, you know, when we, I'm now sort of, you know, speaking with the, the advantage of hindsight, when we had the G20, uh, 
Saudi Arabia, of course, uh, is a member. Then I believe UAE was invited. Now, it would have been smarter to invite the whole GCC, I mean, without Saudi Arabia, because they don't need invitation. Because with more than 8 million of our people, with the high level of energy import that we have, and the cultural connections, because they are our neighbors, and as the host, we had uh, the discretion to invite all of them. In which case, the Amir of Qatar also would have come. So these are the lessons, and there may be more to learn from this. Right. In fact, uh, the MEA has uh, now, uh, you know, they had issued a statement, but now uh, they have spoken about this and said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi was personally supervising New Delhi's efforts to free eight Navy veterans jailed in Qatar. The External Affairs Ministry has said hours after seven of them landed in India, uh, responding to media queries during a special briefing, Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Kawatra said Prime Minister Modi has been personally supervising this issue. This, the release, is a proof of his leadership and also reflects the strength of India Qatar ties. If we can play up that sound bite. On the set of questions uh, relating to the release of <coughs> Indian nationals in case of Al Dahra case, uh, uh, whatever we wanted to say, we have said it in the morning. We are uh, grateful for their return. We are gratified on their return. Uh, we deeply appreciate uh, the uh, decision of the Qatari's government and the Amir to release them. Uh, we are happy to have uh, seven of those Indian nationals back. Uh, eighth international has also been uh, released and we continue to work with the Qatar government to see how quickly his return to India would be possible. Uh, as we have said already in our statement in the morning, uh, 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 and people have articulated also, Honorable Prime Minister has himself personally constantly supervised all the developments in this case uh, and has uh, never shied away from any initiatives that would ensure the return of uh, um, Indian nationals uh, back to home. Uh, we can uh, talk of different frames and terminology, like Sridhar, you mentioned, whether it's a release or a pardon, etc. But I think we should see the facts for what they are. Seven of the eight internationals of Aldhara case are back, back in India, back to their homes. As I said, we are extremely gratified about it and appreciate deeply the gesture of the Mir of Qatar for the release and uh, continue to work on the on the return of the eighth Indian national. Uh, Smita, to your... Right. This was the MEA special briefing that was held uh, today. Uh, General Katoj, it also, uh, you know, tells us something about the relation between India and Qatar, how much it has improved over the years. It's not a small case. It, the case had gone to the, to the court and they were awarded death sentence, which was then commuted to uh, sentences three to 25 years. And now they have returned home. This also tells the level of understanding and the relationship that has been worked upon by both the countries in the last few years under the leadership of Narendra Modi in India. You see, Zafar, the way I look at it is that India is growing in stature year by year. It is not just that we are the fifth largest economy. I think India's voice is being heard everywhere. And the Prime Minister of India is a global statesman. And that counts for something. Now, for Qatar to um, weaken the relationship which we have, basically on the basis of these eight uh, naval personnel, who I feel have been wrongly targeted, uh, they must have realized that it would be better to let them go and gain India's goodwill. So that, that is one of the points. But the question still remains, you know, what, uh, what Commodore Singh had, uh, earlier said, you see, this is a plot by an external agency. And I think it would behoove the Qatar establishment and their intelligence agencies to get behind this plot. And if the Pakistanis are involved, to expose them. Qatar has got nothing much to do with Pakistan, despite the fact that they are a Muslim country, both of them. They, they would much prefer to have uh, economic relationship with India. And the $78 billion uh, uh, LNG deal, which is going to extend, I think, up to 1945 or so, that itself is a pointer. 
So uh, India has improved its relationship with all the Gulf countries, uh, which has never happened earlier. In fact, today, uh, Pakistan is getting isolated and India is in a very warm wicket with both Saudi Arabia and with Iran and with all the Gulf countries. I think that is a very positive statement and it bodes, uh, bodes well for the future. Zafar. Right. Right. Uh, last word to you, uh, Commodore uh, G.J. Singh, if he's still with us. Yes. Uh, last word to you. Did you manage to speak to them or any of their family members? You know, what is the last uh, thing that you want to say about this entire series of events, how it's now ended? Uh, no, I have not been able to talk to anyone. Uh, uh, because uh, I think they're not uh, within that same, like, I'm a bit senior to uh, them. I'm not their course mate or uh, anywhere near their course. Uh, but uh, I uh, did uh, speak to uh, one of uh, an officer who has uh, been uh, very closely monitoring these things. They, they are all in good health. Uh, I believe they are, uh, except the traumatic experience that they had, there's nothing to it and they have whatever uh, torture they went through they have coped up with it very well uh, they are in a good mental uh, uh, health also as we have seen them speaking and um, i think overall it has been a victory it has been a great achievement as everybody has said uh, better uh, uh, to rejoice uh, as it is said there is always a season a time for every matter in the heaven a time to rejoice time to mourn, time to speak, time to keep silent and all that. So I think this is a time now for us to celebrate because they have come. Uh, that is what we were looking out at. Otherwise, call it anything, pardon, uh, call it release, call it redemption from hell. I would, I, I, I will put it this way because when we heard the news of their being uh, put uh, to gallows uh, and coming from there, I call it is a redemption uh, from the hell to uh, the Garden of Eden again. <laughs> Come right. back to that is, our that's... own country. Sorry, jahan se achha, <laughs> Hindustan hamara, you... wo baat hai. So, main kahunga, baut, right. baut khushi hai is baat ki hume. Uh, and the victory for everybody, diplomacy, people of uh, India, their families, uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, government, everyone. I think it's a all-round victory for us. We are grateful to that, everyone. That's a that's a very good note to end our show on uh, you know they are back and they are in a very good frame of mind and happy that they're back in their country and back with their loved ones uh, thanks so much to all our panelists for joining us today and thanks so much to our viewers for joining us and for watching the Mojo story Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.